good evening everyone welcome back to this uh, interactive session so this is week number 4 mm. uh, but uh, uh, so last week we actually uh, have completed the week 3 live interactive show, uh, session but as uh, i got to know that your uh, your assignment submission deadlines are nearby for week number five because for week four i think it is tomorrow or maybe it is it was yesterday that i am not sure but otherwise i think uh, that i got to know that it may be over so uh, to account for this gap and to make this session effective to, to the students uh, because uh, the intention is to uh, is to that we discuss some questions so that it will help you to solve the assignment questions right so based on that uh, <coughs> what i did i i marched the week 4 and week 5 uh, basically both are capacity analysis together so that uh, so that it will help you in solving the assignments of at least week 5 and since we did not discuss the week 4 also we will be going through the week 4 assignments as well right also the uh, course material so uh, so initially we will uh, usually uh, talk about the uh, topics that have been covered or at least a brief overview of the topics that have been covered right uh, in this uh, week 4 and week 5 of traffic engineering so we start uh, this uh, capacity and uh, LOS analysis starts with the concept of capacity and LOS. So what is capacity? So I already talked about capacity several times. So capacity is that how many numbers of vehicles a traffic facility whether uninterrupted or interrupted can accommodate per hour based on the prevailing roadway traffic environmental and other conditions right so for a particular traffic flow at a particular traffic facility at a particular environment how many number of vehicles maximum number of vehicles that can cause a particular uh, particular uh, point on on a on that road uh, at a unit time that is maybe per hour we can express it in terms of per hour right so that is the capacity so that is the maximum handling capacity of a particular uh, roadway facility so then what is the level of service so level of service means so currently what is the operating condition of a particular traffic facility so since we know that traffic as well as so suppose we, we, we are fixing the roadway conditions like number of lanes lane width and other things right and also suppose uh, the geometry, uh, the environmental uh, constraints are also not there, right? It is also uh, same. So at 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 that uh, even at that uh, condition, prevailing conditions, uh, our traffic flow uh, will vary, right? During peak and off peak, it will also vary, and during different uh, periods of the day, also it will vary. So based on that, suppose you have a capacity, but uh, suppose during peak hour, your uh, demand or your actual volume is actually exceeding your capacity so then what happens right so your uh, you, you can say that uh, my operating condition is very bad during peak hours but it may not be so bad during off peak hours right so we need uh, we need some kind of measures to measure like 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 uh, like how to measure the los so uh, if 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 we use traffic volume and then by capacity that that can be a factor right so you you, you your maximum capacity 1000 vehicles per hour per lane and suppose your LOS is uh, 500 then you can say it is like a 50% uh, good and bad we don't know right so uh, that's in that sense this uh, level of service concept actually came and basically it talks about uh, so it it, it it also varies uh, during different uh, uh, for different facilities and different uh, traffic and roadway conditions but but actually it is a kind of quantitative threshold so 
or maybe a to f actually we usually divided the LOS as a to f a is the very good level of service while f is considered as poor level of service right so poor and good and in between there are uh, different scenarios so uh, that's how that's how we can calculate the uh, operating condition of a of any traffic facility right at a given condition uh, so now um, so then that's why we we need to know how to calculate the LOS as well as the capacity right so then what are the roadway elements so basically if you see a road like this so it's a uh, suppose uh, this is the intersection and it's a road right so points are this these are the points it is called the intersection it is the definitions are based on the highway capacity manual 2016 right so what are the segments then segments are if i have another intersection here intersection here hmm. like that so this is called the segment between the two intersection what is the space available that is called the segments so what is a facility then so the no so what i told is wrong this is called a link this is called a link and the segment is link plus this downstream intersection it is called the segment and the facility is if you merge two three segments together then we may call it a facility right it's a sufficient uh, length if the sufficient length is available and then the corridor corridor also kind of a big stretch right so now we know that what are the roadway elements so why we define this roadway elements so we can actually have capacity at a particular point like a signalized intersection or unsignalized intersection or stopway controlled intersection or yield intersection right we can have that capacity we can have a capacity of a particular segment so these are the different roadway segment right then for a facility also we can get it right here facility means points plus segments right that is called a facility huh? not not only that means total thing segments two three segments maybe uh, we can uh, combine and we can say that it's a facility and then the corridor and the greater uh, level uh, in the road networks right so that's why we define because we will see that how those are different for different uh, uh, different facilities right so then uh, hourly flow rate so, uh, so already we talked about the capacity so here also if you remember we talked about the peak hour factors right so we said that uh, even if uh, during one hour your traffic volume is 2000 it might be possible that that uh, 2000 volume out of 2000 maybe 1500 volume is occurring at 115 hour period so if you design according to the uh, only the design hourly volume so during that 15 15 minute period where the traffic volume is very high so that time it will be the level of service will be very bad right so that's why we need a hourly flow rate flow rate means 15 minutes for if 15 minutes what is the uh, flow rate at the maximum 15 minutes so that's why uh, usually we use peak hour factor to measure this right so then already I told the prevailing condition that is what is the prevailing roadway geometry roadway geometry means what is the number of uh, lanes what is the width of the road uh, and several other things like what is the uh, maybe the median is it uh, so those kinds of things right so then the traffic what is the traffic volumes so that quantify the traffic and what is the operation and control operation means is it a one way road is it a two way road uh, is there anything any ITS system that has been deployed there or is it not or the operations are smooth or not those kinds of things control means is it signalized intersection is there is it a signalized corridor even where uh, signal progression is uh, properly designed right so then what is the environment because if there are harsh environments so it will also impact your uh, capacity and as well as the level of service 
सो देन देर आर समथिंग कॉल्ड कैपेसिटेड बेस कंडीशन सो बेसिकली सी ईच टाइम इफ वी गो टू द फील्ड एंड वी वॉन्ट टू मेजर द कैपेसिटी बिकॉज वी ऑलरेडी लुक एट द ट्रैफिक फ्लो थियोरी इन द प्रीवियस मॉड्यूल्स पर्टिकुलरली आई थिंक मॉड्यूल सी एंड दैट टाइम वी सॉ दैट मे बी ड्यूरिंग डिफरेंट डिफरेंट रोड्स एंड डिफरेंट बॉटल लेक कंडीशन ड्यूरिंग डिफरेंट आवर्स ऑफ डे इफ वी मार्च दो सैम्पल्स देन वी कैन रीच अप टू दी कैपेसिटी सो कैपेसिटी इट मे नॉट बी रीच्ड ऑल्सो एट ऑल टाइम्स राइट एंड द मेजरमेंट ऑफ कैपेसिटी ऑल्सो समटाइम्स कुड बी चैलेंजिंग राइट इन द फील्ड इट मे टेक लॉट ऑफ टाइम एंड रिसोर्सेस एंड एफर्ट्स राइट सो वट वट यूजली वी डू we actually there are multiple studies that has been done even in india also we have done some multiple studies which actually reported in the highway capacity manual right uh, indian version of it so uh, in the us also they have done uh, different uh, capacity studies and uh, what they did they defined something called as a base capacity so once you know the base capacity means the ideal condition so there are no constraints like geometry like your uh, uh, your uh, uh, suppose the road wheel length is should be this your shoulder should be this uh, divide if it is a divided carriage way so your median length uh, median width should be this and the, there there will be no uh, or very light or very low amount of uh, proportion of heavy vehicles so those are the base condition some of the base condition so there are no problems in the uh, pavement itself that is obstruct the traffic flow right so with respect to this we define a base condition then we go to the field and find that how it is different from the base conditions right so suppose uh, a flow uh, suppose a capacity is defined for for a uh, 3.5 meter road suppose uh, so now we found that we went to the field and we see that actually 3.5 is not available due to the uh, roadway constraints maybe effective lane width now is 3 meter so based on that we can use some kind of uh, adjustment factor uh, to calculate the uh, capacity like modified capacity of that particular road so similarly we can use for shoulder and for other various other things right so that's why uh, we usually do the correction and you get the capacity right and it is mostly um, it, sh- it should be actually mostly accurate it is not that uh, it will be exactly same because it uh, but but still it, it, it's a fairly uh, reasonable estimate of the actual capacity so now there is a uh, term called the quality of service so previously we defined what is a level of service so level of service is that how your facility is operating at what level is it good or is it bad like that so quality of service is basically as a traveler how do you perceive your travel experience so if you are traveling along a particular road what is your traveler perspective regarding the quality of that particular service service been suppose you are uh, traveling along a particular urban road during peak hour so what is your perspective are, are you seeing it as a bad service or a good service so it is a qualitative thing right quality of service what is the quality quality is good quality can be bad quality can be poor uh, quality can be very good like that right and and then how it is different from level of service so basically okay i told that okay quality could be this could be that could be something else also but now i need some kind of quantitative measure because otherwise i cannot say good or bad uh, uh, it is a relative thing suppose i uh, went to a place and uh, someone is saying okay good someone is saying bad even if you are aggregating it uh, your good and your bad also might vary uh, depending on the different different uh, travel conditions right so so for quantification what we did we actually calculate the level of service 
and level of service actually for level of service as i told that you need to have some kind of performance measure whether it is speed whether it is density whether it is flow rate whether it is vyc right so some kind of performance measure is there so now what we did we define some threshold then for level of service a this is the threshold 0 to this 0 to the, then that point to this that point to that right so 1 2 3 4 5 6 we have defined some threshold so within that range it can be considered as a level of service a within within that range it is considered as the level of service b and so on and so forth right so actually it is representing the quality of service only but in terms of quantity quantitative terms right not qualitative So then how, what are the factors that can affect your quality of service? So, so if you are traveling along a road, so your pavement quality, the roughness of the pavement, then what is the comfort level, right? If you are traveling, uh, what is the comfort level? Then the, uh, if you are traveling by a public transport, then what is the convenience? then is your uh, is are you able to reach the destination within reasonable time right which is called which is indicator of travel time reliability right so those are the some of the factors which might affect even if you are traveling if you are travel uh, if you are driving by yourself so is are you able to maneuver your vehicle as per your wish or you are constrained so you are not able to properly maneuver so there are many things that affect the perception of a traveler right which actually impacts the quality of service so then as i said LOS is a step function like that this is LOS A then B and then C and so on and so forth right so just a moment as Otojit I am going to do a recording of this recording. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, I am going to say this. I am going to say this. One second. Sorry for the interruption. So then uh, I was discussing about this uh, level of service A to F and uh, I, I was saying that it is a step function right step means it has some threshold and then we reach to the threshold so it is a step function so now we come to the actual capacity analysis for basic freeway multi lane segments so these are both actually falls under uninterrupted port flow facilities right it is not interrupted by any thing I, ideally it is not like freeway is it, it, if you compare uh, in india um, the urban expressways are also falling under freeways but it is freeway is actually a rural term right rural freeways in, in case of us and other western countries so it is uninterrupted flow facilities there is no interruption from any other uh, direction it is going through the uh, through uh, going through movement right multi lane highway is also ideally uninterrupted but sometimes uh, intersection might impact after uh, after uh, some long segment there could be some kind of uh, intersections may be there so it is uh, it is a slightly lower level of uninter uninterrupted facility but it is also falling under the uninterrupted facility in most of the times right so then how a freeway breakdown can happen right so what is a freeway breakdown so freeway breakdown means so if there is uh, some bottleneck and and uh, at the upstream of that bottleneck queue is forming so that is called the freeway breakdown 
but in in ECM terms, if your uh, free flow speed existing like whatever the your free flow speeds is, your if your free flow speeds reduced below twenty five percent of the actual free flow speed, and it sustained for at least fifteen minutes, we can consider it, or we can call it as a breakdown. So breakdown occurs. So uh, at 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 what scenarios this kinds of breakdown can occur? If I ask you, so uh, suppose uh, uh, bottleneck could be like some vehicle breakdowns is happening and we are having some bottleneck. In maybe uh, we are having some narrow bridge, right? Uh, while we are traveling uh, through the uh, freeway. Uh, that is also can create a bottleneck right and if uh, if the vehicle's volumes are high so it might impact it right then also it will breakdown only happen when your uh, means demand is greater than your existing capacity means the capacity of that bottleneck here not the capacity of the freeway right in that scenario freeway breakdown might occur so that is what is written drop in speed at least uh, 25 percent or more uh, so for 15 minutes period so it should be sustained also so then just before breakdown if you imagine just before breakdown it is just reaching the capacity of that particular bottleneck the volumes vehicle volumes the capacity will govern right so capacity also if we see uh, just before that breakdown the 15 minutes we will get the actual capacity Right, it is not in stop and go situation. Just it will reach that situation. Before that, it will reach to the capacity, and then it will go to the unstable uh, thing. So then, what is the freeway recovery? So once your demand is less than your bottleneck capacity, what will happen? That uh, uh, whatever the vehicle queues that have happened, it will starts to recover. Uh, so it is called the also called the queue discharge rate. So Q and Q discharge it will recover and it will obviously be less than than your actual capacity, which actually I think we we have discussed it, uh, two three times uh, during our previous uh, live sessions, right? So okay, so uh, then pre breakdown it okay. So that that's what I said before breakdown, which is called a pre breakdown for it, which is actually nearing the capacity or governs the capacity. So then, in case of post breakdown flow rate, so after uh, breakdown, what is the post breakdown flow rate? E actually, it is also equal to the uh, sorry Q Q E Q E Q discharge flow rate. So then, hello is measures for freeways. Okay, so that's what I said. See, what are what, what, how can we uh, how can we measure the LOS of a freeway in terms of which performance measure? So there are many macroscopic performance measure, even microscopic, right? Uh, flow density, speed, even VYC ratio. So what 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 is the uh, measures for a freeway? So for freeways, we have density. We can take space mean speed, right? And then we can take VYC, that is the demand or observed volume by capacity ratio. So here, if we see, we are not taking the speed as well as flow rate, right? Even flow rate we are not taking. So why we are not taking those factors as your performance measures? So if you see, LOA should be, it should ideally reflect the traveler's perception regarding the service. So if you are traveling a vehicle on a road, so if you imagine, so speed is a factor that you uh, you know, right? So, so if you are traveling at a speed of 60, you know that how the surrounding, surrounding vehicles, what, what, what is their speed also, right? Because of the surroundings. And also, if you are nearing to a congestion, you know that you are congested, right? You are in a congestion situation versus you are in a free flow situation. That is also in your perception. But in terms of flow rate, we actually do not have any idea about direct idea about the flow rate as a driver sheet if we 
considered uh, consider us as the drivers so flow rate means what what is the number of vehicles that is crossing a particular point we do not have any idea but we directly have an idea about the speed as well as the density right speed is number one and then the density so but still we are not for three ways particularly we are not taking speed as the performance measure so the question is why flow rate we understood we do not have any direct idea but speed and density we both have an idea so here mm, here actually speed means time means speed right so what happens if you if i plot it what happens so your flow rate and your speed so it is like that so even in the low flow rate and even in the high flow rate until a particular flow rate which is typically very high we are not actually decreasing our speed right so that is the reason your speed is not a sensitive factor in that regard so that's why we are not taking directly speed as the because in different flow rate your speed could be same so we cannot say that what is the uh, level of service or what is the operation quality so we cannot say so that's why we generally took density or vyc vyc because it's a volume of vehicles by c is the capacity right we can take it it is not a directly uh, drivers uh, that thing but uh, still it, it is a reasonable performance measure right? but ideally uh, we should take either speed or density but here we took density because with speed we cannot uh, do this right and now um, it might happen that uh, space means speed sometimes uh, but that is also i need to check because even i am not sure that space means speed can be taken or it cannot be taken that that i have to check this so then we come to the how to uh, estimate the capacity so first is step is to estimate the free flow speed so uh, so already we have a base free flow speed and we can apply some kind of correction factors given in the in the uh, even in the hcm and then we can calculate the free flow speeds once we know the free flow speed is it directly impacting your capacity so we can actually get the capacity as well so once we know the capacity and once we collected the data uh, like like demand data uh, then we can use peak hour factors to represent because we, we we took the data for a particular hour so now you want to take the peak hour factors which may be given in the code and then we can adjust also for heavy uh, heavy vehicles also we need to adjust our demand right we need to convert it into pc instead of vehicles so then once we do that we use some kind of adjustment factors like heavy vehicles and all and then uh, uh, now we can estimate the speed right as already we have estimated the, we have already estimated the free flow speed now we can estimate the actual speed which is uh, which is in relation to this free flow speed and density also we can estimate right so then once we know this we can estimate the level of service so so what are the inputs that we required so you need to collect the unit parameters data as well as the demand data then you can change the demand to the actual pcu per hour and capacity you can calculate from the free flow speeds so once you know the actual capacity by also using some kind of adjustment factors that was given so now you know the capacity and you can estimate the speed from the free flow speed uh, the actual operational speed and then 
the density as well because you know the capacity and you know the speed so you know the density right so now uh, we can estimate the level of service based on the density so then we come to the so uh, this uh, procedure is similar for the freeways as well as the multi lane highways so generally in case of multi lane highways uh, the both are uninterrupted facilities and both are uh, uh, mostly uh, follows similar kind of uh, uh, traffic flow parameters pattern so we can use the same parameter for uh, the both of these things right so now uh, we go to the two lane highways so uh, two lane highways is actually uh, it is also comes under the uninterrupted facilities but uh, generally two lane highways could be some kind of arterial two lane highway sometimes uh, sometimes it may be uh, passing through some residential area or developed areas right so there are different kinds of uh, two lane highways that may serve their purposes so class 1 2 lane so there are three classes that is defined in highway capacity manual 2016 so class 1 2 lane highways primarily uh, they are acting as the arterial roads and their service uh, their main purpose is to provide the mobility right not the accessibility so in that case, so in case of class 1 highway, we use two, two kind of service measures, not one. So one is the average travel speed and uh, another one is the percent time spent following. So see, so this is a two lane road like this and like that, right? So uh, your, if your speed here is suppose good high but here there are a number of vehicles are volume are high so even if your speed is high you will not be able to overtake because for overtaking you need to take this approach right so yeah, now your speed is high then also you are not able to overtake another scenario is your volume in both direction are very high so here speed is less and you are following and then you are not able to overtake so two scenarios the level of service is bad here right rather than this now what happens if you consider only speed we may not be able to capture it right because another scenario could be your speed is less here any but here you can actually overtake so the scenarios could be different so we take speed average travel speed as well as the person time following so what is the time that is following because here if the traffic volumes are high then it may not spend that time in following right if it is less and if it is more it will take more time so we need to take the, both uh, ATS as well as the PTFS these two right so what is the percentage time following so then class 2 sideways are not that uh, it will it is also obviously serving the mobility but it is not the primary purpose so it is you can imagine the collector or local street uh, those two lane highways right so their speeds are relatively less maybe collector street you can imagine right or in in medium category so they are actually because your because your speed variations are not that much right so uh, we, we we may not actually want to take speeds into account right we can directly use this ptfs in case of pffs that is the percentage of free flow speed because here actually speeds are very low and it is for very short segments this kind of uh, very short segment residential roads we have a two lane highway right so in this scenario only if you calculate your ATS and you see what is the free flow suppose free flow is 40 your ATS is 30 then you can say that so here uh, we do not need to use other performance measures right so then uh, up to this we actually uh, we were talking about the mainly the uninterrupted flow facilities right now we actually came to the interrupted flow facilities like urban street segments right those kinds of things so now in case of urban i already talked that
suppose so this is your r1 thing so this is called a link sorry up to this it is called a link this is called a segment right and also uh, your uh, segment could be isolated segments by considering only one intersection or maybe you can uh, build a facility by taking multiple segments and in that case uh, if your vehicle arrivals are uh, random then may you, you can analyze analyze uh, the segment as your non coordinated system or maybe you can analyze this as a coordinated system right so then uh, in case of operation analysis we go very deep right we calculate all the data then actually we calculate our operational LOS in case of design we may be assuming some factors and we can as we can uh, we can take some kind of uh, primary survey uh, for some of the things and then we can accordingly say that what is the uh, level of service but in case of planning we primarily do not use uh, any kind of data we can rely on the secondary data source and we can actually do that right so there are three kinds of things that can be done Okay, so for urban street because it will incur delay at signalized intersections, right? So travel speed basically it is a running speed we take and also V by C, right? These are two factors. So here uh, we uh, are not consider about the density because it's a interrupted facility, so density is not making any sense because at a at during red time your density is, is density is very high and after red your density is very low so then what does it signify we know that already so uh, we, we need to we need to use some kind of different uh, measures right because we are incurring the delay so that's why we take the travel speed and we by ratio and as i already mentioned so there could be two kinds of uh, analysis that you can do one is coordinated other one is the non coordinated so then spillback also it's a uh, uh, it's a term that has been used here so which is called a cyclic spillback and sustained spillback spillback means your vehicles are speeding back speeding back means suppose you have a signalized intersection where queuing is occurring so now your vehicles are accumulating right and it is actually going to the upstream intersection right from downstream to upstream so it is called this spillback so now if uh, during the green time all the vehicles which are there in a queue if it is vanishes so then it is called this and and again for the next cycle again the vehicles are queuing and it is again finishing so it is called as cyclic spillback right? because it is affecting the your upstream intersection and then what is the sustained spillback sustained spillback means even if after green time your previous whatever during the rate the vehicles are accumulated they are still there you have not able to disperse those vehicles right because your demand is constantly greater than your capacity so now there is a sustained speed ah, so this ends our discussion on hcm 2016 right? 2016 so now we came to the Indian version of HCM. So the concepts are not entirely different. Concepts are uh, pretty close, but okay because India follows a non-land based heterogeneous traffic where we have a mix of uh, um, uh, mix of uh, non-motorized vehicles like auto uh, like uh, cycle rickshaw cycles, uh, right, and also a mix of different vehicles like uh, like like small trucks, uh, large trucks, buses, so that's uh, making it more complex. So there are some concepts uh, that has been introduced, right? And it is also constantly, they, it will update also in the future. So uh, it is already uh, have been discussed. So now, 
we can come to the question answer session uh, for today right so first is which of the following statement is true regarding basic freeway and multi lane highway segments which we talked earlier right today only we talked about this so first is speed and capacities on multi lane highways are lower than those on basic freeway segments with similar cross sections so speed and capacity both on multi lane highways are lower than those on now obviously because uh, it is true i don't know whether others are true but it is true so because in case of multi lane highway there could be some minor intersections like after a uh, after a uh, after a while right uh, but in case of freeway segments it is absolutely uh, without uh, no interruption right so obviously uh, speeds will be higher in on uh, freeway segments right uh, compared to the uh, multi lane highways and also capacities also could be higher so then in case of second speed is taken as a service service measure for defining los in case of uh, this basic freeway multi way segments okay so this is actually not true i told you that speed is a sensitive thing because uh, like uh, speed is not much changing uh, up to a particular flow rate so that's why speed is not that sensitive so that's why we do not use speed as the service measure for defining los so then the third is when demand exit capacity it represent conditions of level of service e so uh, level of service are a to f right a is the poorest so f is happen when your demand is greater than your capacity right already your demand is exceeding your capacity so your level of service is f so it is not representing e e means it is near capacity right and f means it is already exceeded your capacity so it is not e it is f so it is also not true so then in speed flow curve of basic speed flow curve means this this is the speed and this is the flow speed flow curve which ideally is like this but actually is like that uh, for basic seaway segments under base conditions okay break point is constant for different free flow speed so break point is this so if you change your speed to this Oh no, your break flow break point will change. It will vary because based on the speed, different speeds, your profiles will be different. And as your profiles will be different, your break points will be different. So it is also not right. So I do not think that you have any doubts regarding because it's a straightforward thing. so now the second one is for a basic freeway segment with adjustment factor for lane width has 1.9 mile per hour okay for a basic freeway segments with adjustment factor okay lane width adjustment factor is 1.9 adjustment factor adjustment factor for right side lateral clearance right side lateral clearance for 3 meter clearance is 1.8 total ramp density is this Default visible speed is taken as seventy five point five. Actually, it is given. It is taken from the highway capacity manual. So now, what is the free flow speed when it is operating under ideal conditions? So I have already written the formula. So I will wait for something, and I want you to calculate because you know what is the best free flow speed, and you know what is the I F L W. You know what is the F R L C. You know what is the total ramp density, right? So everything is given. Now you can calculate what is the uh, free flow speed. So I will wait. So maybe.
So, did you calculate it? So maybe I will do it also with you. Six to the power zero point eight four. So, to calculate, you put it as 75.4 minus LW is 1.9 minus 1.8 minus this. To calculate whatever it is coming directly you can say that is the free flow speed right so we can move to the next one so accept or reject type of statement so vehicle capacity is commonly used to evaluate public transport services high occupancy vehicle lengths and pedestrian facilities so we, we, we can already al always say that for pedestrian facilities it should be how many pedestrians are there not the vehicle so it is not the vehicle capacity it is the pedestrian capacity in terms of this for high occupancy vehicle lengths also the idea of a high, high occupancy vehicle lens is that so if your vehicle is a shared vehicle it will it can move to the high occupancy vehicle lens, right it can move forward and also it is true for the public transport services we are actually running public transport services because it can take more number of passengers so actually the total travel demand will reduce right so it is not the vehicle capacity rather it is the person capacity So then the next question is roadways are always designed to provide LOSA during peak periods except of reject. Okay. So generally what we did during peak your volumes are very high. So if we design a roads that will serve LOSA. So your uh, infrastructure requirement, your resource requirement will be very high, right? We may not need that kind of service. We may need some kind of LOSB or LOSC even, right? During peak. And for off peak hours, it may reach LOSA. So generally, it is a false statement. Right? So shall we move to the next one? So this is Q discharge flow rate is same as the post breakdown flow rate. So once it is breakdown is occurs, then during breakdown, what is the flow rate? Hmm. So obviously it is a Q discharge flow rate which is governed the post breakdown flow rate. But then at the time of recovery what is happening? That is a question. 
with the time of recovery because your post breakdown after breakdown flow rate is it a q discharge yes obviously it's a q discharge only but then whenever it is recovering it will it may reach to the previous pre breakdown flow rate maybe that have to be sure but here it is true. so in cyclic spillback the q completely dissipate during lean time that's what i discussed that in cyclic spillback your q is completely dissipating during the green time right so this is this 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 was what i discussed because it's a cyclic means for each cycle there will be queues but it will be dissipated during the so lower value of the automobile uh, traveler perception score for urban indicate a good performance and vice versa so actually your lower value indicates good performance because the lower value means traveler is satisfied with this so it's a true statement so then unsignalized intersection are always uncontrolled in nature okay so unsignalized so it is not signalized but if it is not signalized then also it might be uh, it might be a uh, stop controlled intersection maybe it might be a uh, yield controlled intersection maybe because uncontrolled means there is no control which ideally intersection should be controlled it should not be uncontrolled but in case of indian context uh, due to this uh, due to the various problems maybe uh, initially it was a stop controlled intersection or yield control but maybe your stop signs have vanished so now it is actually acting like a uncontrolled intersection so then your statement is that unsignalized intersection are always uncontrolled is false it is not true then sustained spillback occurs under over saturated so yes over saturated means your demand has exceeded your capacity so if 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 it is so your demand is exceeded your capacity so it's a case of sustained spillback right so always there is a queue it is not dissipating during the green time and it is actually affecting the previous intersection because it's a spillback so then for intermediate lane roads number of followers as a percentage of capacity is taken as a service measure to estimate the level of service as per indo acm 2017 right so because it's a intermediate lane road so maybe approximately your width is 5 meters so now in case of yeah, USACM, there is no concept of any intermediate lane roads, but in India we see this kind of intermediate lane roads, right? Uh, especially in the rural area. So they are actually what happens? Both movements are possible uh, within that particular road, and there is no central lane to distinguish the lane. So it's a uh, it is a act like a uh, like a single lane only, but with enhanced enhanced capacity right so it is called the intermediate lane roads so here also uh, it will act as a two lane road it will actually spend some time uh, but here actually it will may be slightly more complicated because uh, your that movement also may occurs so your number of followers as a percent capacity so what is the your number of vehicles that a following you as a percentage of capacity so you may go through indro ACM one so it is a true statements and maybe you can uh, go through indro ACM ones or to check or to clarify rather so then the tenth question is a signalized intersection has saturation flow rate of 1700 vehicles per hour per lane right so your effective green ratio effective green ratio means your effective g by your cycle time it is 0 0.5 number of lanes are 4 saturation flow rate is 1700 vehicle per hour per lane so 
so then total is vehicle per hour this is your total demand so through capacity is your green is 0.5 so then 0.5 is your through because your total time is 3600 but it will be less uh, half will be and 3400 so this is will be your through capacity at any intersection right because it is the maximum amount of flow that may happen because uh, during uh, uh, red time there won't be any uh, vehicle and it are actually driving so then uh, total length of an undivided it is not a divided urban street segment is 1800 both boundary intersection are signalized control delay is 30 seconds running time is uh, to when the travel speed right so n equal to vt is the formula for travel speed we need to calculate this v that is the length of the stretch by the total time spent so what is the length length is the 1800 feet that is the segment length so what is a segment segment means link plus a downstream intersection so although they are saying that both boundary intersection are signalized we will take only the this because travel speed of a urban street segment that we need to calculate so for one intersection because it is a 30 seconds per intersection per vehicle so 30 seconds is the travel time that is the delay and the running time is 40 so 1800 feet by second so what will be the answer uh, 1800 by 70 so it will be 25.71 so it will be 25.71 feet per second right it's a simple problem so then 12 point is which of the following statements are true with respect to capacity adjustment factors for two lane roads okay two lane roads as per indo ic okay two lane roads it's right so increases shoulder width increases capacity so okay yes because it's a two lane road so now if you increase the shoulder length actually the vehicle will start using it and it will increase your vehicle capacity so on even directional split so uh, even directional split means 50% and 50% split now on even directional split means maybe suppose 70% vehicles and 30% so here vehicle will traveling at a good speed here uh, there will be less speed now if uh someone uh, uh from this lane wants to overtake the front vehicles and come to this lane he doesn't have any opportunities right so then uh, uh, compared to this 50 50 it have a, it has a greater chance right so that's why it decreases the capacity so increase in gradient so there could be two kinds of gradient one will be longitudinal direction one will be the uh, transverse direction or curvature so curvature means like that like right? horizontal curvature so obviously if you have a curvature it will decrease your capacity if you are uh, now increase in gradient here also or uh, gradient means if if it is a transverse gradient then actually it is decreasing your capacity but if it is a longitudinal gradient then we did not say that it's a upward gradient or downward gradient so it's a debatable question hmm. but uh, otherwise it is decreasing the capacity so increase it road roughness if your road is rough then also obviously your capacity will be reduced so there will be less vehicle that will be flowing right so it will actually reduce it okay so that was from my side so if you have anything more uh, for clarification or for doubts or for something else you may ask
otherwise we may close the this week 4 and find uh, this is week 4 for my session but for course traffic engineering course is a combined session of week 4 and week 5 Okay, if you have any queries, you can ask directly because I was discussing because you were not there. So, so these are the things that I have discussed. I will go through one by one. These are the topics covered. Then uh, these are the questions. So if you, uh, so this is a, this was a combined session of week four and five of traffic engineering. Since you have to uh, submit your assignments of week five, uh, uh, maybe in the next week so I thought that uh, I should design it in such a manner so you will be able to solve the uh, assignment of uh, week 5 as well right so uh, regarding that if you have any queries or anything to ask you can ask so I was discussing it that some questions obviously are from uh, week 5 uh, week 4 and some some are from week 5 right uh, because it's a continuous thing week 4 and week 5 uh, so it's a only capacity the difference is uh, in week 5 we started from the tool and highways the operational and those analysis and then we come to the urban street and then later we come to the indo ACM, right uh, so i was uh, discussing those numericals as well so if you want to go through it then you can say that okay i want to go through it i will go one by one otherwise you can directly ask uh, if you have anything to ask i will wait for your uh, response So uh, these are the things that I was uh, discussing. What do you mean by capacity and then LOS? Then why we need such kind of Rodeo elements for capacity and LOS analysis? Then what is the hourly flow rate? Why we need to calculate this hourly flow rate? Then what do you mean by prevailing roadway way traffic operations control and environmental conditions, right? So then why we need to define capacity based conditions because uh, it may not be possible each time to calculate the capacity because uh, it may your facility may not reach capacity at all the times. So you need to define capacity and then you see that what is the current condition and then you adjust uh, your capacity based on the uh, prevailing condition and calculate the current capacity. right? Then also we are discussing that what is the difference between uh, your level of service and quality of service. So uh, in level of service uh, while quality of service is a uh, qualitative criteria uh, based on the perception of travelers. So level of service it is a quantitative stratification uh, of the performance measure that is chosen for a particular facility. Right. So although level of service is actually indicating the what is the quality of service uh, but yet actually represent in terms of quality uh, in terms of quantity so that we can quantify right because good means nothing good bad uh, they cannot mean anything so it's a uh, it's a perceive uh, perceived thing uh, for a traveler and it may change based on uh, based on the location and based on uh, various other factors so now there is a need to quantify it that's why it is quantified as level of service and as level of service varies between a to f uh, so it's a step function right step by step it is uh, from good it is uh, coming to the bad scenarios and then a capacity analysis is almost same for uninterrupted facilities for uh, basic freeway and multi-lane highways because both are uninterrupted facilities so uninterrupted means there are no uh, intersection, no merging and diverging of traffic. Uh, ideally, there should be none. Uh, but in case of multi-lane highways, sometimes there could be uh, some kind of minor signalized intersection at long gaps. Right. So that's why always 
your capacity and speed will be higher on uh, basic freeway than your multi lane highways but how we calculate the capacity and LOS it always remains the same right so then in case of freeway uh, because it's an uninterrupted facility so why there is a breakdown you, uh, one can ask so suppose uh, there is a itself a vehicle breakdown or suppose it is uh, it is uh, so there is uh, there is a narrow bridge right so you know you want to travel through the narrow bridge so now your capacity has been reduced right and uh, at at that uh, bottleneck like in the bridge case or in case of vehicle breakdown where your some, some maybe sometimes one or two lanes has been closed due to the vehicle breakdown uh, or maybe vehicle uh, accidents right so in that case your at that region what happens your uh, capacity is less and your demand will be more so it will actually create a breakdown kind of situation on the uh, freeway right and is uh, the definition of uh, these things are actually given in HCM so then once uh, that thing has been done like your incident uh, or your vehicle has been repaired and it was removed from that particular location and then your capacity starts to regain and your recovery process started right and in case of breakdown before breakdown actually what happens generally your flow rate reaches to the capacity right uh, because capacity is the maximum flow rate so uh, before unstable time period it is actually reaching the capacity and then the post breakdown flow rate right so then also we uh, talked about the what are the different performance measure for quantifying LOS for freeways right so actually we have speed density flow as the parameters right uh, but uh, drivers are actually aware of the speed as well as the density so are there are more vehicles or less vehicles but drivers have do not have any idea regarding the uh, flow rate so what, what is the flow rate flow rate is the number of vehicles that are passing at a particular point uh, in a in a in a one hour time period so driver do not have any idea regarding that flow rate so that's why it is very important that uh, uh, our uh, and because LOS is a measure uh, that is based on the travelers perception ideally so we take density and speed as the performance measure we can take but in case of freeways because uh, the, uh, in case of modern freeway trend as here i saw i actually draw that time that it is speed and here it is a flow rate so you see relatively your speed is not changing with the flow rate even if your flow rate is very high your speed is relatively less it is not too less so we cannot take speed to uh, actually uh, get better insights about the uh, level of surface we cannot because it is not changing uh, even if your flow is increasing Right. so it is not sensitive to the uh, flow so that's why we can take density as the uh, measure in terms of freeways as well as for multi lane highways so then how to calculate the capacity it is actually given in terms of a flow chart in the ppt and also here and then we come to the two lane highways which is also falls under the uninterrupted facilities but because it's a two lane so our service measures are slightly different right like average travel speed and percent time following because uh, now you do not have any uh, lane a uh, two or three lanes so that you can just easily uh, maneuver and do this uh, so there is a uh, ptsf right percent time spent following so these are the things that we were discussing so as you have do not have any questions so maybe i will end the session for today
so maybe I will close this session because we do not have any any more questions right so I will just end it